Did you know that NEMASA Deep Blue assets include but are not limited to sea assets? These are two special mission vessels and 17 fast interceptor boats. This is to secure Nigeria's territorial waters and provide security and maintain it in the Gulf of Guinea. This is the enormous work that NIMASA is doing over the years. Welcome to NIMASA This Week. My name is Eugenia Abu. I shall be your guide. We bring you our usual weekly servings, DG's diary, maritime facts, and other related segments. Don't go away. The Director General Nimasa, Dr. Bashir Jamu OFR, was in London as part of Nigeria's delegation to the 33rd session of the International Maritime Organization, IMO, General Assembly. The Honorable Minister of Marine and Blue Economy, His Excellency Adebo Egao Yetola, CON, led the Nigerian delegation and announced Nigeria's Blue Economy Direction to a global audience while participating at the IMO 2023 General Assembly. The minister said that Nigeria had remained steadfast in the actualization of its treaty obligation and that he was happy to report the recent ratification of six maritime conventions and protocols that will further promote a cleaner marine environment, shipbreaking criteria, global standard for fishing crew, and response to oil pollution casualties. While in the area of climate action and in fulfillment of IMO's commitment to the global fight against climate change, the minister said that Nigeria was committed to working with other member states in the implementation of the strategy. The Nimasa DG Dr. Bashir Jamu, MD MPA Mohamed Bello Koko, Permanent Secretary Dr. Magdalene Ajani, Director Safety and Security Babatunde Bombata, and Nigeria's alternate permanent representative at the IMO, Abdul Durisu, all joined the Honorable Minister and the outgoing IMO Secretary General, Kita Klim, for a meeting at the sidelines, where Kita Klim described the decision by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to create the Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy as futuristic and strategic. He also commended Nigeria for providing security in the Gulf of Guinea. <laughs> Finally, on the DG's diary, Dr. Bashir Jamu was also with the Honorable Minister Adegoiga Oyetola when bilateral meetings with representatives of Greece, Qatar, and Mexico took place. We conducted research on facts and figures of what we have in terms of fishery, in terms of aquaculture, in terms of uh, ship buildings. We have uh, gone around to know the number of ship buildings we have what is the problem they have, how do we address the problems, ship repairs, what do we need to do and other things like that. We went, we now develop, we went to the development of the strategy, we, we will now, we now get to the level of the implementation and uh, after the implementation, monitoring and evaluations. All this is been documented.
Republic of Equatorial Guinea has become the 20th full member state of the Abuja Memorandum of Understanding on Port State Control for the West and Central African Region, Abuja MOU. The Republic of Equatorial Guinea deposited its letter of acceptance of the memorandum to the Secretariat on the 23rd of November, 2023. Captain Sunday Umoren, the Secretary General Abuja MOU, says the regional integration for port and flag state implementation will surely have a positive multiplier effect on safety of the maritime industry. Shipping is very dynamic and uh, you, you always have constant revision, constant update at almost every um, MSC meeting in IMO. That's the Maritime Safety Committee meeting in IMO. These countries, those countries and MOUs must be in tandem with the development. Um, flag state, as flag state is, which is the, um, the authority a country has over the ships registered under them. Flag state is actually the bedrock of port state because you must be an inspector, a flag state inspector first before you can become a port state control officer. Our own guiding uh, resolution A155, which is on the procedure of post control, is now being expanded to cover all the recent changes such that post control officers will be properly informed and guided in the execution of their duties. Commenting on the Dr. Bashir Jamal-led administration at Nimasa and the role it is playing in the region, Umoren had this to say. Um, with kudos to the the Minister of Transport then and the DG of Nimasa, Nigeria sponsored the training of the policymakers, the DGs of all, director generals of all the maritime administrations in the region were congregated in Nigeria for their training. And it's going to happen again in 2024. And the DG had given us an open ticket to say, Sunday, anytime you want our support, please. Do not shy away. Come and let's discuss about it. Abuja MOU was signed by 16 countries represented by the maritime authorities on the 22nd of October 1999 in Abuja, Nigeria. The other 19 full members are Angola, Benin, Cape Verde, Cameroon, Congo, Cote d'Ivoire, Democratic Republic of Congo, Gabon, The Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia, Nigeria, Sao Tome and Principe, Senegal, Sierra Leone, South Africa, and Togo. The Secretariat of the MOU is provided by Nigeria through the Federal Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy. Participants from the Martin Luther Aguay International Leadership and Peacekeeping Center, Jaji Kaduna State, who are members of the Anti-Piracy Course 523, paid a visit to Nimasa. Their mission was to learn more about the operations of the agency. The director deep blue at Nimasa, Otonye Obom, welcomed the team on behalf of the management led by Dr. Bashir Yusuf Jamu. He noted that the collaboration between Nimasa and the Nigerian Armed Forces can only get better with such familiarization visits. The core mandate of uh, the Martin Luther peacekeeping uh, our leadership uh, institution is about training. And training is one of uh, the key mandates of uh, both the DGS and the management and the agency. This also show the level of collaboration the agency had in recent time with uh, the Nigerian Navy, and that collaboration keeps increasing. And um, particularly the maritime uh, security and maritime safety has also collaborated with the military in training some experts, both in the field of combat uh, training and uh, in very various facets. So once more, I wish to welcome you on behalf of the DG, the and the agency to the Nigeria Maritime Administration and Safety Agency. Uh, this center, Martin Luther Hawaii International Leadership and Peacekeeping Center, was established in 2004. And at the establishment, it was strictly meant to train officers and soldiers uh, in issues related to peacekeeping, particularly when it comes to deploying contingents to peacekeeping. 
So three years ago, in collaboration with United Nations Development Program, with funding from the government of Japan, uh, we came together this tripartite team to develop curriculum specifically for maritime security. And one of the areas that was of focus was the issue of piracy in the Gulf of Guinea. Two thousand and nine to two thousand and nineteen, the insertion of uh, the activities of the two group. As at that time, Nigeria was now ranked as the high risk zone in terms of piracy. The federal government took um, took a proactive decision to see how this. Uh, Statistics can be reduced if possible to be eliminated. By doing so, we introduce a integrated project known as the Deep Blue. After the welcome formalities, it was time for the participants to get acquainted with how NIMASA has been working on improving national and regional maritime security through the Deep Blue project. I would like to know the role of NIMASA in investigating maritime crimes. Most of these crimes are portrayed in the waters, while most of the proceeds are being enjoyed on land. So I would like to know how they investigate such like crimes. How are you coordinating your interventions with the Nigerian Navy on the ground? A commodore from the Nigerian Navy that is commander of the Ghibli project and um, is responsible for command and control. He takes charge of completely command and control. While the agency um, has a director of the project, and the agency on the other hand is responsible for the provision of logistics and management. The Martin Luther Agua International Leadership and Peacekeeping Center is an operational level training center that delivers training in conjunction with the government of Japan and the United Nations Development Program, UNDP. witnessed special uh, uh, industry like aviation having separate ministry uh, being carved out of transportation uh, and uh, maritime and blue economy shouldn't be an exception. Actually when we talk about maritime, maritime is actually uh, is vast as well as blue economy. Blue economy actually we are referring to sustainable use of ocean resources to, to create wealth and to generate employment. Of course, it's of um, huge uh, uh, benefits to the industry. Um, you agree with me that one of the main uh, uh, functions of the agency is enforcement. Of course, for, you, for the agency to achieve robust enforcement, uh, there, the, 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 there is need for such platforms. Uh, what we need to do to enhance safety in our waters uh, will be I will consider it as uh, being multi faceted because safety is number one. Safety and security in our waterways should be the primary consideration. First and foremost, we have to consider, we have to look at the area of infrastructural development, the, the buoyage system. Uh, some of the boys are no longer properly positioned, they've drifted out of place and all that. So over time we've been talking about making Nigeria a maritime hub. So a nation that wants to be a maritime hub without um, uh, 
a facility for ship repairs and uh, ship maintenance, uh, that nation cannot be said to be serious. So, for when you are talking of safety, we are also looking at the the, the way we are looking at ways of making the vessel uh, seaworthy, uh, ensuring that vessels that flag the, the nation's flag are not substandard. For people designing our, uh, the policy, maritime policies, uh, blue economic policies, we should sustain advocacy and by setting agenda for them. I mean, embracing agenda setting. We should also uh, uh, criticize them constructively. There must be a concerted, um, deliberate effort at ensuring that our indigenous capacity is developed. Shipping is capital intensive for us to to actually play alongside the big maritime nations, we need a careful, uh, deliberate effort has to be made to develop indigenous capacity. For uh, the local operators, for indigenous operators now, I'm talking of stakeholders, we should also try to uh, work at attaining a global best uh, practices. Then adequate resources will ensure that our vessels are uh, well um, uh, uh, provided for so that uh, the vessel could meet the required uh, safety regulations. Any vessel operating coastal voyage in Nigeria must mandatorily have on board the following. Vessel logbook, vessel port of call, vessel particulars, which include registry certificates, safety equipment certificates such as safe manning certificates, builder certificates, load line certificates, tonnage certificates, radio certificates, insurance certificates, classification certificates, passenger ship safety certificates, service certificates, cargo ship certificates, and waiver certificates or receipts. Vessel owners, captains, shipping agents, and members of the public are advised to note and comply. to the stakeholders, what are your expectations? What are what you think we can do to make Nigeria great, to make marine and blue economy great, and to ensure we help Mr. President deliver his mandate? You understand? In line with his eight-point agenda. So we sat down, we break down the eight-point agenda, we pick up the priorities, and while the minister took up his priorities, signed the agreement with Mr. President, he's now cascading it down to the ministry, uh, to the press titles. A team from NIMASA, led by the executive director, Maritime Labor and Cabotage Services, Barrister Victor Uche, was at the National Assembly for an interactive session with the Senate Committee on Employment, Labor and Productivity. The Committee on the Ratification of International Labor Organization Convention on Fisheries had a closed-door meeting at the Nimasa Abuja Zuno office during the week. The meeting was attended by representatives from the ministries of Marine and Blue Economy, Agriculture and Rural Affairs Development, Labor and Employment and Justice representatives from the Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC, Trade Union Congress, TUC, and the Nigerian Merchant Navy were also in attendance. Media stakeholders in Lagos converged under the ages of Maritime Reporters Association of Nigeria, MARAN, to discuss issues concerning safety and security in the nation's maritime domain. 
Here are some thoughts of the stakeholders at the event. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to join Marat to say welcome for a very national discourse that is dear to us as a people, politically, economically. Today, the new DG Nimasa have already worked to improve on it, and as I'm talking to you, all the local workers have been satisfied with the biometric ID card. Did by Brother uh, Omasa uh, here and the new DG. We want to thank you on behalf of your pockets. Thank you, Maran, as the foremost Maritime Reporters Association for the job you are doing. We appreciate you. And uh, once we were in the trenches together, you came to the trenches with us, you fought, and you brought us out of the trenches. We must have a system that allows us to know every vessel operating within Nigerian waters. Also, we need to set up fishing terminals. One of the challenges we have in fisheries right now is a situation whereby our trawlers who are going out to deep sea trawling are being attacked by international offshore sh shipping vessels. Why? Because they don't want them to come out there. So if we set up fishing terminals, at least Fishing trawlers can have their fuel, they can whatever they need, their food, and they can go out there, do their trawling, and come back. Even the foreigners they do come and observe how do we do it. From my slide, 2022 to date, we don't have attack, single attack. When we are experiencing attack in Somalia, the whole world went to Somalia. America, England, Germany, they went there to fight the virus. But Nigeria was we stood firm. With the help of Nigerian Navy, they ensure that we dealt with the situation. Today what we are talking about is sustainability. So Nigeria stands at the top range of the first five in Africa. I am, because we didn't do the rating, I don't want to say we are number two or number three, somebody will come and contact me. But I'm telling you we are of the ten, top of the range. Most of the African maritime administrations, we open it for them. Like Gambia, we were the one that went and started from the initial stage to build the maritime administration in Gambia. Until tomorrow, we are doing the same. Introducing the Nemasa Distress Response Call Lines for all maritime stakeholders, ship owners, seafarers, ship captains, whatever your challenge or distress in the Nigerian maritime domain, please call 0803 0685 167. 0708-0005-956-0700-0700-010. If you can't reach us on these lines, please call 0700-0700-020-0700-0700-030. Also via VHF Radio Channel 16, call and the master will respond. What are you anchored on? This week. For me, I'm anchored on relationship building. This is one of the greatest assets of NIMASA, building bridges between organizations that are related to them, building bridges between them and organizations that have something to offer. NIMASA has always dwelt on relationship building, and I'd like to take that on board this week as my anchor. Build relationships. You don't know where that will take you. Until next week when we come your way again, I remain Eugenia Abu with thank you for joining us.